All right, I'm going to say this up front. We are recording this on the 16th day of July, 2023. We are recording this before the Angels play their game against Houston. Saturday, the Angels won a bizarre game. It was final score was 13 to 12. Uh, it was a wild uh, slugfest against the Houston Astros. But it was one where the Angels desperately needed to win because I think they were in a six or seven game losing streak at the time. They were in an absolute nosedive. Um, but even with that win, the chances of the Angels being even the third wild card team are really slim. I mean, you think about it, you take a look at the right now you have the Orioles, the Toronto Blue Jays, and the Houston Astros are the mm -hmm. uh three American League wild card teams. The Yankees are, you know, you know, tapping on the outside looking in. Uh the Red Sox are about what, about three games out at this point. So you know, they're still a long shot, but they're close. The the Angels are still floundering around, you know, you know, right now they're at they're still they're a sub five hundred team in what is gonna soon be late July. Okay. They're not good. all that on the table. Here's my stance, and I want and I want to get your take on this. Today, okay. and arguably before I finish this sentence, the Angels have to do one of two things because the third option is disastrous the first option is they have to find out what otani's number is as the great comedian mm -hmm. jackie cation say we've all got a number what's the number tell me what the number is what's the number that will have you sign right now and you'll stay in anaheim your great grandkids can go to law school everything is taken care of and if they say there is no number, we're going to go to free agency, then you have to trade him right now, like to the point where he's already made his last pitching appearance as an angel. Because the closer you get to the deadline, the more risk you have that he may get hurt and the more risk you have that uh, you know, a deal could fall apart. Because either they have to re-sign him long term right now or get something in return because if he doesn't sign long term right now and he hits free agency there's a better chance that I'm on the Angels than Shohei Otani is next year. Yeah, and he probably should have already gotten the deal done. Like it's probably too late to do a deal at this point midway you know during the season. If you wanted that Otani long term extension, I think it would have to have been done before the season. Once Otani oh, hits yes, free agency. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 There's no chance I think he's coming back to the Angels. And, you know, at the beginning of the season, I would have told you the Angels had to do everything to keep Otani, right? With how the season started, you're like, you had to put the winning environment around him and everything. But as the days goes on, as we see them fall in the standings, you're like, it feels worse and worse. The vibes feel worse around Otani returning to L.A. And as it currently stands, I think you have to trade the Angels. I mean, I just don't want to see the Angels any longer with generational superstars. Personally, I would like to see it all blown up with the Angels, trade Otani, go send him to whoever, trade Mike Trout too, because listen, I want to see Mike Trout in a good situation. I want to see him in a winning environment. That man deserves so much more. I feel like the baseball life is just being drained out of Mike Trout, that happiness when it comes to baseball, that joy is being drained out of him. So I want to see both of them. Maybe you do some insane package where you get the top 40 prospects back from someone else's organization, both the Trout and Otani. That would probably never happen. But if I'm the Angels, they've had, they've done such a disservice to their stars to their fans they've had no idea how to build a roster when you have the two greatest players that we've ever seen in the last 20 years it's been really disgusting that we've seen from the angels so personally i think it's time for the angels just to blow it up trade everyone do a fire sale and just restart this whole thing pretend that you never had the two greatest players in gen generational history pretend that you never had these two transcendent players and just wasted their careers because if i'm an angels fan i don't even want to remember the mike trout era i don't even want to remember them the otani era the fact that we had these two stars and could do absolutely nothing with them just trade them away and let some other team figure out how to build a contending roster with those players and you made a point I 100% agree with that this there is no excuse that we're going we went into this season with this still hanging over the team. They should have done this before the year. But, you know, either make the deal or make the deal. But instead, yeah. you know, the I'll tell you that you know, we can't be Superman and fly around the earth and put time back, okay? And 
what should have happened going into this year was they should have just cleaned the entire front office out. Everybody. Because I can prove in a court of law that this front office has been horrible. Because you said, we've got Otani, we've got Trout. And you can't even put a mediocre product around them. You need to at least say, we got a new GM. We got a new scouting director. We got a new direction. Moving forward, we're going to put a good team around you. But now they're like, yeah, this. you mean the same guys who for the what, how long is it, the last six years have had Trout and Otani and that combination has seen, forget a, a World Series title, have they seen a winning team? Have they been on a team that's been above 500? And when you do wins above replacement, you have those two players whose wins are above replacement by a significant amount, which means everyone else is worse than a replacement player. And going yeah. into this year saying, hey, we're going to have a different direction. We're not going to win this year. And I'm sorry, Halo Brothers at Locked on Angels. You do, they, they do a great job on their show. But when I started the year and I said, I don't see any change with this team. I don't see why this team is a contender. And they're like, oh, they've improved this. They've improved that. They've improved this. They've improved that. Here we are. It's mid-July, and the Angels are sellers. And again, the Angels make piles of money. The Angels are a very profitable franchise. They have a very good fan base. They have very good attendance. They make a lot of money on their television package. They're actually, you know, people give them guff, but they're the the fans support that team, and they yeah. have they have these two great stars. But you know, he's gonna walk. You've got the Mets have an angry fan base. The Yankees have an angry fan base. The Cubs have an angry fan base. The Giants want to splash. The Dodgers want to splash. Seattle has a restless fan base. Baltimore's on the verge of something. By the way, Baltimore is the team that I think, and I made this point, I think they're the team the Angels should be talking to because the the Orioles have a ton of outstanding prospects. And even if Otani is just a rental, what it will mean for that franchise to potentially win a World Series this year, which I think they suddenly, I think they'll pass Tampa if they had Otani. And I wow. think would be the, because they're only two games back right now. Yeah, and if cool. they had Otani they would suddenly become the favorite to win the American League pennant. And even if Otani skedaddles, what that would mean for that franchise and everything like that to finally win, to get back to the World Series, put a World Series in Camden Yards, and maybe Otani would be like, hey, wait a minute, this is a great baseball city. I could fall in love with this. I think they're the team that they should be talking to. The Yankees don't have the trade chips to pull this off. If they would, those trade chips would already be on the major league roster. The Mets don't have the trade chips to pull this off. The Cubs don't have the trade chips to pull this off. And I don't think Seattle has the trade chips to pull this off. I think you'll have the Orioles will have to get, but like, like can't miss all-star prospects. And I think you're, there are more of those in Baltimore than any other f- organization right now. And if you'll say, oh, we traded away these prospects, yes, but we got Shohei Otani and a legitimate chance to go to the World Series, you make that trade. You know, if yeah. for no well, other depends reason how the many money they'll teams. bring in. Yeah, it depends how many teams. A lot of the teams with the best prospects, maybe they're not in the best position to win, even if they got Shohei Otani, or maybe they don't even want to give up the amount of prospect that it would take to get Shohei Otani. And they would also have to ask themselves, once we acquire Shohei Otani, is that with knowing he's going to sign with us long-term, or do we still have to play the free agency game? Are we getting Otani with his intent to sign with us long-term? Because you can't trade for him and still let him hit the open market and still let him walk. If you're trading for Otani, you have to know he's okay staying with you long-term because there's some other teams that I could mention in terms of the prospects that they could give up to the Angels, could make a play. Like a team like my team, the Arizona Dimebacks, they have more than enough young talent to go get Otani, but I don't think they would do it. One, because I don't think they would probably pony up the money. And two, because I don't know if Otani would want to stay in Arizona long-term for that kind of deal. So it is going to be kind of tough to find a team that has both the 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 amount of prospects. Like a team like the Yankees, like you mentioned, would love Otani, but their farm system always sucks. And you also don't know how the Angels evaluate other teams' farm systems. Like, maybe they do actually like whoever the Yankees have in their farm system. I don't even know, but it all depends on how Angel scouts and evaluators also see other teams. And 
When I also just think about this Angels franchise throughout the Otani Mike Trout era, just the other thing that kind of gets me upset, it just maybe like when I look at some of their weaknesses, it's maybe the lack of just overall spending when it comes to that team because I don't know the financials of that owner. Like every owner in Major League Baseball makes money, but when you look at who they actually pay, of course Mike Trout makes money, but outside of that, like you're paying Anthony Rendon thirty five million, but you look at the last decade, like it's Albert Pujols, it's the Rendons, you got a little CJ Wilsons in there, but you're not really. Josh Hamilton a ton too. of money in the time you did yeah Josh Hamilton like you haven't spent a ton of money but that was all like a deck that was literally all in one summer when you got like the pool holes the Hamilton and the CJ Wilsons and then since then you spent money on uh Anthony Rendon like if I'm the Angels and you talk about cleaning office or like clean that front cleaning the front office what I would have wanted to see is you bring in a super aggressive ultra GM like the Dave Dombrowski type who comes in he blows up your farm system he goes out yeah. acquires the Chris Sales of the world goes out there, spends money in free agency, and you just do what the Phillies have done, the Rangers have done, the Mets have done the last couple of years where maybe it does work out, maybe it doesn't, because we've seen the hit or misses with the case studies of the Mets and the Phillies and the Rangers where maybe that first year isn't good or maybe that second year isn't good, but at least you're spending money and pulling talent on the field and building the best roster possible because guess what? Just just doing these number four starters as your aces in your rotation behind the Otanis haven't worked out. And I will at least see a GM in a front office be super aggressive, knowing you have these two generational talents we're going to go out there we're going to try to do the aj preller method and get as many stars as possible in the la angels it's not like this is a team in the middle of ohio this is still i mean they're they're not la but they're they're close they're anaheim they're still in california they're still so so this is still a great destination for any superstar i think it's crazy that they haven't added more talent spend more money during the offseason or gotten more aggressive in the trade market well it's also they've had the trout era is over a decade old and you should be at this yeah. point be able to build a pitching staff through your farm system. Now, I, I, it's worth noting, of course, that over the last decade and a half, the, the you know the Angels had two deaths of young pitchers, and Nick Adenhart died in yeah. I think it was two thousand nine. Tyler Skaggs died in twenty nineteen. I mean, I mean you know, if they had had those two young pitchers would have developed into fine pitchers on the roster. I don't know the answer to that. Neither do you, but even in the wake of those two tragedies, that's still more than enough time to build a pitching staff, build one through your farm system, yeah. build one through scouting. This is why I say they have the thing that would have made over the off season to say, show, Hey, guess what? We got all new people running it. We're going to put a good product on the field. And I, you know, I, I personally believe I, I I keep fluctuating between a couple of teams. My instinct says he's going to go to the Mets. Part of me thinks he's going to go to the Cubs. And part of me thinks there's a team we're not thinking about, like San Francisco or Seattle, who's going to swoop in. San Francisco certainly wants to make a splash. But the nightmare scenario for the Angels, I think, may unfold, which is they'll get nothing. They'll get a compensation pick draft, you know, uh, a supplemental pick. But for this generational talent, they'll get someone who might be a decent, you know, utility infielder. Um, Because I don't trust the scouting department to draft well. They've had over a decade to draft well, you know. So I I don't – it's sad. But I think he's good. I think he's good as gone. And if he is good as gone, get the best player you possibly can. You'll never replace his value. But – you got to try something. Yeah, because that's one of the issues. Yeah, because that's one of the issues with the Mike Trout era is when you think of Mike Trout and his whole time with the Angels, who's his partner in crime during that that was developed by the Angels? The guy you're like, okay, it's Mike Trout Nobody. and this guy taking your team. Like, yeah, there's no core with the Angels outside of Mike Trout. Like, at least when you think about, you know, the Red Sox pre all the trades, like you had your triple Bs of these homegrown guys and the Yankees when they were winning all their stuff. And even the Dodgers, they always like, you think of all these great teams in Major League Baseball, they have cores that were home. Grown and developed by their system, or, or, and the whether they home... just have Mike Trout. I mean, think about like when you know the Giants had they had Buster Posey, who was their MVP, but they all had Pablo Sandoval, they had Brandon Belt, they had you know Crawford. They would trade for the Scooteros, or they would trade for the Hunter Pences of the world. But they had you know they had developed a rotation with Lincecum homegrown. Those have your Kane core home. at least. Yeah, Lincecum, Baumgartner, Kane. 
you know, Johnson Sanchez one year, Jake Peavy another year, Brian Wilson out of the pen one year, Castilla another year, Sergio Romo. They had a they had a phenomenal bullpen, you know, Affelt and and Javier Lopez and all them. But you saw there was a group of players who they could always turn to that, you know, okay, belt, I can always turn to belt. I know I could turn to, you know, come, come postseason time, you know, Sandoval, you know, turned into a big star. Um, there's, you're right. Who is the, the go-to second baseman? Who is the go-to who flanks, you know, trout on either side in the outfield. It's they've had, they've had a, they've had a generation to do this and they've, they haven't pulled it off. Yeah, because we well, talk what, about the lack of the rotation, but just the lack of development anywhere on the roster that's just been awful for the Angels. Uh, and yeah. the pitching's part of that. Too. It's astonishing. Um, I, I We're going to wrap up here with two quick things. First of all, um, I've been up here and, and I've been watching a bunch of Giants games with, you know, my, my, my mother, my family, extended family, and, and friends of the family here. And one of them, the brilliant Dr. D- uh, Dolph Pfefferbaum was here. who's was basically a member of our family and wanted to watch the Giants game. And of course, the Giants game was on Apple TV and he kept flipping back and forth to where the Giants normally would be. And I said, it's on Apple TV. I said, well, maybe it's over here. I said, trust me, it's on Apple TV. Well, maybe it's over here. I said, I know this. It's on Apple TV. And he asked, because he's a brilliant man, the question, why is it on Apple TV? I said, I don't know. And today it was on Peacock. Therefore, making the entire Bay Area wondering, where the hell is the game? And look, at, I understand baseball is trying to open up some markets and new revenue. But here's the deal, okay? You're doing that, putting it on Peacock, putting it on Apple TV or whatever, to attract fans who aren't normally watching baseball. You're subscribed to Apple TV and said, oh, today we got the baseball game on. And you flip over to watch it. What you don't do is alienate the fans you've already got. Like if you have a Patreon account for your podcast, okay, the people who subscribe to the Patreon account are still going to get the free episodes. It's not like I put on the Patreon account, but the free episodes are over here. You want to keep them all together. And the one thing you don't want to do, especially since we have 4 billion choices to watch and listen to, is have people say, where is it? I don't know. Fine, I'll watch this. The minute you say, where is it, you've lost. So if the people who are already fans are saying, where is it? That's a bad thing. I know you're trying to find new fans and whether or not this works or not, not, that's outside my pay grade. But never get your diehard fans who are looking forward to the game to say, where is it? And then ask, why is it there? And why do I have to subscribe to something when you already have me as a fan? So I just wanted to yeah, throw yeah. that one little plea out there. Keep it in one place. Yeah, and sadly, it's not even like a baseball issue. It's just the way we see with sports and streaming now with Amazon Prime getting the game, YouTube TV getting the game, like you said, Peacock and Apple TV. Like every streaming service just wants a piece of it. And these sports leagues are just going to give it to the highest bidder, whoever wants but, their games. And, and I understand that. I'm not against that. But what I'm saying is also keep it where it usually is. Because you, what you're trying to do there is you're trying to find new oh, Don't fans. make it exclusive of what you're saying. Don't make yeah, it, don't make don't it make exclusively it to that. For everyone who's already there, yeah, we're already here. But you're trying to branch out. Okay. But hey, it's also playing on Apple TV. Oh, and, so you, and so someone who may not normally watch a baseball game is like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll watch that. But while we're having dinner over the Giants game and we're, we're, we're flipping around like crazy, we put, we put it on the radio. We put it on KNBR. We have seven quadrillion devices at this place, and not one of them was playing the Giants game. And uh, think about that. When you have your your core fans going, where is it? Where? That's a bad thing. Hey, um, I'm going to throw out – oh, so what you got? Well, I was going to say, can I actually give you my favorite Otani conspiracy of where I would want him to go? Oh, please, please, please. 
Okay, because I actually want him to stay in the same kind of color scheme, still stay with that red and white, because this is a team that's called a lot of frustrations for both of us, Sully, the last few years. This is a team that has been clearing the books for somebody, right? They couldn't afford the Mookie bets of the world. They couldn't afford the Xander Bogarts. They being getting younger with the rookies. They hit on the Yoshidas of the world. Maybe that was the first inclination to bring in Shohei O. Tani, and maybe this team would just clear in the books to bring in a big fish on the payroll. Maybe it's the Boston Red Sox who want to pair him with Rafael Devers, get the nastiest power lefty duo in the league, bring up Marcelo Mayer because he cannot be included in this package. He is the future of the Boston Red Sox. At least that's what they're selling and marketing to us. You got you need some more rotation help, but you get Otani in Boston with the red and white. You get him going against the, the green monster, peppering that with doubles, hitting home runs to right field hitting that pesky pole oh, Otani in Boston I think would be a lot of fun imagine all those Boston people in the accents Otani I don't even know how to do a Boston accent but Otani. them doing the show Otani. 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 Yeah, show me um, Otani. I think it'd be phenomenal this is the conspiracy that I've been waiting for get them to Boston because they finally got the money to pay him oh they got the money to pay him yeah. they've always had the money to pay him um yeah, I would love that. that I would love that I think there's a better chance they'll sign me than Otani. Oh, but uh, I mean, I would lo- look at. It, I would love to be proven wrong. I would love to be proven wrong. I didn't think he was going to sign with the Angels. I thought originally he was going to sign with the Cubs. So, um, yeah, you know, look at. It, I would love that. I still think. Uh, hmm. I think. I think. I think he wants to. I think he's going to stay on the West Coast. And I. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. He's going to end up in Dodger blue. But we'll mm, see. Stays in California. We'll, we'll see. Doesn't travel that far. Um, let's do our let's do our trivia uh, question for today. Um, we just had the All Star Game, and so I'm, it's going to be my last All Star Game question. Uh, but who is the only? What is the only time that the All Star Game manager was the manager of the Montreal Expos? Only once in the history of the All-Star Game did the Montreal Expos manager manage the All-Star team. Who was it and why would the Expos, a team that never won the pennant, have their manager be the All-Star Game manager? I know, uh, Craig and Amy, you're going to be getting it right, and some of you all throw that out there as well. Send your questions at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Miller, where can people follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Career Times 24 for my personal account. Look up Locked on Dimebacks on Twitter, Instagram, or on YouTube, Locked on Dimebacks, of course, on all your streaming platforms. Are we sure Craig and Amy are not just Googling answers and then telling you the answer is Sully Baseball? That's why I want to get them on the show and see if we can do a quiz okay. show with them to see, to see how, how good they are. By the way, fill out that immaculate grid on uh, baseballreference.com, the single greatest website in the history of planet Earth. I'm having a lot of fun trying to get that uh, rarity number in single digits every day. So I'm pulling stuff out like Stan Pappy with yeah. the Tigers and Red Sox or Don Ossie with the uh, Orioles and Mets. I'm having a blast with that. So uh, we're, we're doing that too. So I saw yours the other day. You had like a six or something, Sully. I was yeah. like, how did, I got, how did he get it that low? I'm usually like, well, I got it to three. My lowest is a three. I got a three. So anyway, oh so, so I'm like, that in the I feel like. <laughs> um, and also follows the locked on MLB pods on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, rejoicing for the injury of Shane Bieber, oddly, and grinding our teeth at the, well, the incompetence around Shohei Otani. This has been a locked on MLB, locked on Diamondbacks crossover. He's Miller Thomas. I'm your pal, Sully. Let's fist pump for another. 